Cape Cod, Massachusetts, known for its beaches and seashore, is a major tourist destination for people from all around the world. With its many recreational opportunities, people flock here for a stress-free break from their everyday problems at work or home. What isn't stress-free is what it takes to get there. Have you ever been to Cape Cod or even lived there? If so, then you probably know about the ridiculous traffic on the Bourne or Sagamore bridges, the only highway connections between Cape Cod and the mainland. These two bridges cross the Cape Cod Canal, an important waterway that creates a shortcut for marine traffic instead of going around the hook of the Cape. While a shortcut for boats, this has become a serious bottleneck for automobile traffic. Usually you see most of the traffic during the summer when tourists flock to the Cape from all over, but now even in the off-season there's major traffic delays even for year-rounders. This is due to bridge maintenance on the almost 90-year-old structures that need to be replaced. From personal experience, 2023 included off-season work on both of the road bridges. In the spring, I got stuck around Sagamore multiple times even though I wasn't even crossing the Sagamore Bridge. Traffic was backed up into Sandwich on Route 6A, and it was terrible just to go a few miles. Once again in September, more bridge work, this time on the Bourne Bridge, took place. This work, planned to stretch into November, closes two lanes creating backups in both directions. While I'm not on the Cape daily, my several visits to the area over the past month or so have been affected by this traffic, even if I don't cross the bridges. Whether it's been backed up down Main Street and Buzzards Bay, or either side of the bridge on Route 25 and 28, it hasn't been pleasant. Maintenance on these 90-year-old bridges is necessary, and you certainly aren't going to do the major work in the summer, so the locals end up dealing with the traffic almost year-round. Now what could possibly help alleviate a portion of this traffic year-round? Well, some think buses, which do help by decreasing the total amount of cars on the road are the answer. While they may technically be an alternative mode of transportation, they do get stuck in the same traffic as everybody else who is on the road. So they help, but they have their shortfalls. So now what happens when there's an emergency situation like an evacuation or a natural disaster what about when traffic comes to a complete stop on the roads for example recently a truck broke down on the Bourne bridge that had lane closures already so that messed things up and that's just one truck blocking traffic in an already tight bottleneck what happens when something worse happens now imagine an alternative mode of land transportation that crosses the Cape Cod Canal and already exists in some form and doesn't get stuck in traffic. Yeah, it exists and is called trains. The railroad bridge over the canal already exists too. The arguably underutilized rail system on the Cape is active for freight trains, Cape Cod Central tourist operations, as well as a seasonal MBTA train running from Boston to the Cape. There are three lines on the Cape, including the Cape Main that runs all the way from Boston to Hyannis, and the South Dennis Branch that runs from Yarmouth Junction to Yarmouth Transfer Station, as well as the Falmouth Line that runs from Bourne to Falmouth and the Otis Air Force Base slash Joint Base Cape Cod. All of these lines are active and are used regularly, but the Cape used to have a much larger rail system. The Cape Main extended all the way to Provincetown with a branch to Chatham, and the Falmouth Line extended south to Woods Hole. Most of these lines were cut back between the 1930s and the 1970s, but miles of track have been removed in recent years. While I said what's left of the lines on the Cape are still active, they are certainly underutilized when there's major traffic issues on the roads. 35 million vehicles travel over the road bridges annually, but they don't all have to. In my opinion, bolstering the Cape Rail infrastructure as well as first and last mile bus and truck connections is the answer to Cape Cod's traffic issues.
saying trains are the answer to this problem is one simple and easy way to get my point across, but I think I owe my viewers an explanation. This explanation has two main components. There are freight trains and there are passenger trains. First, let's talk about freight. Today, freight trains run on the Cape already, so some increased freight service could start as soon as tomorrow. Increased service would take trucks off the road as it takes a few tractor trailers to make up the load of one rail car. While the ratio of amount of trucks per train car varies, the commodity construction and demolition debris takes about five tractor trailers off the roads per rail car. Construction and demolition debris already moves by rail off Cape, but there could be uh, lo more loaded on rail cars instead of using trucks. In addition to construction and demolition debris, municipal solid waste, ammonia, generators and large electrical components, as well as other sh occasional shipments already move on Cape rails. Freight service is uh, dependent on several factors though, so let's briefly discuss some of them. First, let's start with customers. There has to be demand for freight service, and the Cape has no shortage of businesses that already truck materials on and off Cape and to the islands daily. Some of these truck trips, specifically the long haul trucking of bulk heavy material, would be better suited to be shipped by train. In my opinion, bulk heavy material like lumber and rock salt are two very real possible commodities that could start moving on the Cape rail lines very soon. As mentioned previously, trash and construction demolition debris is transported off Cape already, but can be increased to take even more trucks off the road. A 2021 Cape Cod Commission study calls for the use of rail to move municipal solid waste off Cape in the coming years as landfill space continues to decrease. Next, another factor is where the customer is located or where customers can access rail. Given that rail was cut on different parts of the Cape decades ago, new developments like possible rail customers are built away from the rail lines. That means transferring freight from train to truck for the first and last mile shipments becomes a necessity for many new businesses on the Cape if they're going to use rail. Uh, this means transload and transfer facilities have to be built or expanded to accommodate more freight. Currently, there are two transfer stations on the Cape and a few customer spurs that can accommodate freight service. The transfer stations are the Yarmouth Transfer Station and the Upper Cape Regional Transfer Station. Both of these are active and handle waste material. The town of Yarmouth loads rail cars of municipal solid waste for the Mass Coastal Energy Train to take to Covanta Seamass's trash to energy plant in Rochester, Massachusetts. Second, the Upper Cape Regional Transfer Station on the Falmouth Line is operated by Cavosa Disposal and handles construction and demolition debris. About 25% of the material that comes into the facility is recycled and what can't be reused is what is moved by rail to the out-of-state landfills. This is a necessary operation because of Massachusetts uh, limited landfill space and uh, disposal laws. Cavosa plans to expand the use of rail with a 2022 Massachusetts Department of Transportation Industrial Rail Access Program grant. This almost half million dollar grant is planned to take 2,000 truck trips off the road annually, reducing the amount of truck traffic on the Cape Cod Canal bridges. This year, a similar grant was given to Gallo Construction in Sagamore to rehabilitate their out-of-use siding so it can be used for freight once again. This grant aims to take 4,800 truck trips off the road annually. Their facility includes an indoor loading area as well as a track outside for loading and unloading of other materials. This is one of the few relatively intact siding tracks on the Cape that can easily be restored to service. In addition to private customer spurs and waste transfer stations, transloads facilities can be built on the Cape or added to the pre-existing transfer stations. Transload facilities are generally where materials are transferred between trains and trucks for the first and last mile shipments. 
I personally believe that the lumber yards on Cape would be a big user of these if they existed. Local towns could also order rock salt and have it delivered by rail to the facility without having to invest in their own siding and infrastructure. During the future construction of the road bridges over the Cape Cod Canal, uh, cement and steel products could come in by rail. Scrap material from the demolition of the old structures can be sent out by rail as well. This would be extremely helpful because traffic will be backed up because of the major construction. There's a number of other commodities that could move through the transload facilities, but I think you guys get the point that they would be very useful. While there's other factors to take into account, I'll go say one last thing about freight. There needs to be space for increased freight traffic. While the current rail infrastructure can accommodate more freight traffic, if there was ever a major increase, more storage tracks would be needed. With the cutback of rail over the past several decades, old sidings and yards where rail cars could be stored have been removed or reduced in size. Some of these long removed storage tracks would need to be put back in place to put cars before and after loading and unloading. One example of rail going back in place to accommodate more traffic is the South Coast Rail Project. The passenger rail project displaced some freight sidings, so the Middleborough Yard was expanded and two other freight sidings in Taunton and Attleboro are being built. That's it for factors that I'll talk about today, but different things like pricing, level of service, reliability would also need to be taken into account to move more products by freight train. Now on to part two of my answer to Cape Cod's traffic issues, that being passenger rail. There's already the limited Cape Flyer service, but expanding it would help. By expanding, I mean adding another round trip midday would help with flexibility for tourists and riders who may need it on the weekends. Currently, the Cape Flyer's trip between Boston and Hyannis takes about two and a half hours, but that time can be cut down. The track between Boston and Middleborough is the MBTA Middleborough Lakeville line, so speeds are up there, but south of Middleborough the speeds drop down. Middleborough to Buzzards Bay is mostly about 55 miles per hour, but the rest of the way to Hyannis is 30 miles per hour. By upgrading the tracks and installing welded rail, the speeds could be brought up to about 60 miles an hour in some spots. Now, I wouldn't stop at upgrading the rail and tailoring the train system just for tourists. There's year-round residents on the Cape that would need reliable service as well. Commuter rail is the answer to that with several trains a day, year-round, and on both weekdays and weekends. Running a few trains at peak hours, even just for a start, would be helpful for residents who need to commute to and from Boston or anywhere in between. It would also help people coming onto the Cape from the mainland. As of right now, a bus service does operate to Boston from Cape Cod points, but as I said earlier, get stuck in traffic with everybody else on the roads. Another current option uh, exercised by Cape residents is using the commuter rail in Middleborough and Kingston, but that means they still have to fight bridge traffic to get there in their car. Now let's say you'll never use the train because it doesn't go where you need to go it can actually still help you. With more people and freight taken off the roads and canal bridges, traffic would flow more freely, allowing you to drive to where you need to go with less traffic. That's because more people would be on the train, and that means less cars are going to be on the road. It's all about relieving pressure in the bottleneck, so any less l road traffic would be helpful. To make commuter rail happen on the Cape, the current rail infrastructure would need to be upgraded as I said earlier, currently the on-cape track is 30 miles per hour jointed rail, so it would need to be replaced with continuous welded rail that would allow for increased speeds and a smoother ride. Signals and positive train control would also need to be installed along with better warning signals at public grade crossings. Stations would need some help as well. While they accommodate a limited number of riders for the Cape Flyer already, they would need to be expanded for fast, reliable commuter trains. 
Currently, the Cape Flyer stops in Wareham, Buzzards Bay, Bourne, and Hyannis. Wareham and Hyannis are the closest things to commuter rail style platforms with long high levels, parking, and Hyannis has good transportation connections. Bourne, on the other hand, is a very small station platform installed in 2019 to finally get a Bourne stop for the Cape Flyer. Leading up to its installation, there were different proposals on how to make the station work, and they were usually met with pushback from the town and residents. The station was actually supposed to be built back in 2015 near the Bourne Bridge with a long platform and passing siding, but after pushback and a bad winter, it was put on hold. Finally, in 2019, to get things done, the state basically built up a pop-up platform using a former highway bridge section placed on concrete blocks. This finally opened up a point where buses could meet the train on the Cape side of the canal and offer connections to Sandwich and Woodsole. The stop is actually pretty popular and a good number of riders use it to get to the islands. Now imagine the amount of people who would take the train if it could more directly serve these destinations. One issue you see with rail in a lot of places is the location of the train station or lack of multimodal connections. Planning, land acquisition, and opposition from residents have been issues with these transportation projects, leading to worse connectivity issues in the, in the past, but looking past those for the sake of making a point, having rail to transportation hubs and destinations is the answer to making trains work. Of course, there are other factors like frequency of trains and transit-oriented development. Going to where you need to go is the biggest thing. So let's say a commuter rail train was built to the Cape on what's left of the rail system. On the Cape Main, the line ends at the Hyannis Transportation Center, a perfect location for bus connections and the nearby Nantucket Ferry. On the other hand, the active Falmouth line only goes as far as North Falmouth, although historically it did go to Woods Hole. While the line to Hyannis would simply need to be upgraded, the line to Falmouth and Woods Hole would need to be put back in place south of North Falmouth but it would be totally worth it. If the track was not rebuilt south to Woods Hole, a new train station or transportation center would need to be built in Bourne or North Falmouth, meaning a new development and more inconvenient transfers. Imagine trying to get to Martha's Vineyard or Nantucket without a car, and having to get a train to the Cape just to get on a bus or two before even getting to the ferry. This issue could be solved without even having to build a new transportation hub, as two already exist on the old right-of-way. Currently, a bike path occupies the North Falmouth to Woods Hole Railroad right-of-way, and it passes the first transportation hub in the form of the Steamship Authority parking lot and the Peter Pan bus station in Falmouth. Now, how did this location become a transportation hub in the first place? Well, the bus station is actually the old trans station, and the Steamship Authority parking lot is the old rail yard, so it became a hub because of the rail connection. As recently as 1988, the popular passenger rail service Cape Cod Hyannis Railroad brought passengers to the ferry uh, shuttle buses for a reliable connection to the islands. Unfortunately, that ended during the 1989 Massachusetts state funding issues that resulted in major budget cuts like the cancellation of CCH's operating subsidy. Later, and extremely unfortunately, anti-rail politicians uh, actually slipped a bill into uh, legislature that resulted in the tracks being removed in 2008. Uh, instead of being rebuilt to alleviate congestion, it's crazy to think such potentially useful infrastructure was removed so short-sightedly and so recently. Uh, now back to transportation hubs, the bike path goes straight to Woods Hole, down the old rail line to where buses meet ferries and limited parking creates issues for those destined to the islands. This is the second major transportation hub on the now removed rail line, although these tracks were cut back in the 1970s. Uh, having a direct rail connection to Woods Hole would give riders a one-seat ride straight to the ferry slip, eliminating any bus connections or long walks. Simply cross the platform from the train to the slip to board the island ferry. Having direct connections means more ridership because of less hassle with traffic and connections 
and more flexibility on what you do with the time on the train. You could get work done if you're commuting, play a game on your phone, or look over the rest of your vacation plan safely because you are not driving. Uh, these are all things you can do on the train easily, but not necessarily while driving. Uh, now, on a smaller scale, each train station along the Cape routes could have short-haul bus connections to meet trains when they come in. Because of more recent developments being built away from rail lines and right-of-ways, these buses can make the first and last mile connections, so connectivity is not that big of an issue. The Cape Cod Regional Transportation Authority can provide shuttles, similar to how they meet the Cape Flyer, and other bus companies can provide longer routes to the outer Cape from the larger transportation hubs like Hyannis and Falmouth. Another point to make is that the stations on the Cape side need to be built a dis decent distance away from the Bourne and Sagamore bridges to work because of future construction and traffic backups. For example, the station under the Bourne bridge might not work for more regular commuters or tourists using a connecting bus to get to their last mile destinations. Uh, so naturally, stations would work better south of Bourne on the Falmouth line and north of Sagamore on the Cape Main. Uh, these stations would be needed to be far away from the bridges so they don't get stuck in the traffic that the whole point of the train is to uh, avoid. Uh, specifically, those stations away from the bridges could be Sandwich and Falmouth with connections to places like Mashpee or Otis if there was ever a need. Anyways, enough about transportation hubs and bus connections. Rail can work and it already has the support of some folks. That's why a group of Massachusetts state representatives representing different parts of the Cape have teamed up to push a bill to restore regular passenger rail service to the area. Announced at the end of August by Falmouth's rep, Dylan Fernandez, the bill calls for the restoration of passenger rail to Buzzards Bay first then studying the feasibility of Cape Side passenger rail. This study would uh, look at bringing trains to Bourne, Falmouth, Sandwich, Barnstable, Yarmouth, and Hyannis on both the Cape Main and Falmouth lines. Interestingly enough, the legislature refers to the Falmouth line as the Woods Hole branch, so perhaps somebody has something in mind. Uh, now for all this to happen, the rail on the Cape needs to be preserved for future use. As recently as 2008, the track to Falmouth was removed in an extremely short-sighted move so a bike path could be extended, uh, so stopping any further track removal is necessary. At this point, all of the lines remaining on the Cape are active and used, and there's nothing else unused to prune. Despite that, there's an effort by bike path advocates to remove the active and used Falmouth secondary rail line so they can pave it for recreational use. This is a crazy proposal and would stunt any future growth of the rail system and any hope in relieving traffic heading towards the Woods Hole uh, area. I have more videos on this very topic linked on the video and in the video description so be sure to check those out. There's a call to action on these videos where anybody who supports rail can send an email to state representatives to voice their opinion. The contact information and template email to send is listed in the video description if you wish to voice your opinion. Also similarly, I have supplied a template email and my contact information for state reps pushing the bill for commuter rail to the Cape. I want my viewers and supporters to write to them in support of the Cape Rail proposal as well as preservation of the Falmouth Secondary Rail Line. By letting them know you want rail, it helps the cause and gets the word out that people want to see this happen. If we don't voice our opinion to save the rail and expand it, then we won't get alternative transportation, nor will we solve the Cape's traffic issues. In conclusion, trains are the answer to alleviating traffic on Cape Cod for both freight and passenger services. They are the key to a more sustainable future as railroads are the most efficient way of moving heavy freight long distances and can move masses of people as well. With a well-planned and upgraded transportation system, trains can work and more cars and trucks will be taken off the roads. 
Reduced strain on the current road bridges would help with the future maintenance of these structures until they are replaced and hopefully lessen the possibility of catastrophic failure. Without rail service in place, the failure of either bridge would cripple the Cape, so having rail as an option would help immensely. Uh, thanks for watching this video, even if it's a little different from my usual content. If you like this type of video, let me know in the comments, and you'll see more like this in the future. Also be sure to voice your opinion by using the email templates and watch the other videos about the Falmouth Line situation on this channel. Stay tuned on the South Coast Rail Videos YouTube channel for future updates on what's happening in the rail world in this region.